Hello students. So we are going to talk about the process of digestion in human beings. In the last two videos lectures, we have uh, studied about the digestive system and uh, about the various organs that take part in our digestive system. Today we will continue with that topic and understand more about the process of digestion which includes all the enzymes. So for the first we will understand about uh, the digestion process. It is a process, it is a series of reactions of food with the digestive enzymes and juices. This starts right from the oral cavity. So uh, as you know as soon as we start ingesting the food the process of digestion starts. It starts from breaking down of food by the teeth mixing of the food with the saliva, mixing of the food along with saliva by the help of the tongue and then the breaking down of the complex food into uh, simpler forms by the help of the salivary enzyme. So why is digestion important? Digestion is important because it breaks down the proteins, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, minerals into simpler forms so that it can be absorbed easily into the body cells. Now, you must be knowing about this fact that uh, proteins are converted into amino acids, carbohydrates are converted into simple sugars and fats are converted uh, into fatty acids and glycerol. Now let us see how the digestion starts in our oral cavity. When food is taken into the mouth, chewing and mixing of the food occurs. It is also a chemical breakdown of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates from for here, we can understand it uh, for the uh, starch. And this is done by the action of saliva. What happens? 30% of the starch is hydrolyzed by the action of amylase and uh, it is done by salivary enzyme. So by the reaction process, well, how can you uh, denote? Starch mixes with the salivary amylase and it breaks down into a type of simple sugar that is called as maltose. There are some other forms of sugars also which can be called as the simple sugars. Uh, but for example, maltose is one of them. Saliva is added. It mixes with the food particles. It moistens the food. The most important thing why saliva is added, it actually moistens the food and lubricates the food which helps it in, to swallow and when the moistening happens the food tra transforms into a, a bolus like structure which is which can be easily swallowed next the food goes into a muscular tube which is a junction between the food pipe and the wind pipe and that is called as pharynx pharynx helps in the movement of the bolus into the esophagus. Now esophagus is also called as a food pipe. Esophagus opens into the stomach and the movement in the, of the food into the esophagus is through peristaltic movements. Now peristaltic movements, you should be knowing that it is a rhythmic contractile movements of the muscular esophagus. Next, how does the food, when it goes into the stomach, what happens to that food? So next is digestion in the stomach. Stomach is a J-shaped organ and uh, it contains various gastric glands. The, all, all the glands which are present in the stomach, they are called as gastric glands. Gastric word is used for the stomach and it is uh, having the various linings and that, that, that is called as the mucosa lining of the stomach. Innermost layer of this stomach is uh, containing neck cells and what they secrete? They secrete mucus. Now, the more, most important thing to understand here is stomach contains highly acidic hydrochloric acid, which makes the environment highly acidic. Means having pH 1, it means that the stomach will contain all the digestive juices which are highly acidic. So, the mucus protects that stomach environment, stomach structure, stomach anatomy. Now, peptic cells secretes the proenzyme. What is meant by proenzyme? Proenzyme is the inactive enzyme. And that inactive enzyme, its name is pepsinogen. Pepsinogen, it gives rise to pepsin. 
parietal cells or auxentic cells secrete hydrochloric acid now these cells names uh, are can be asked to you so just remember these cells i have enlisted them for you for your uh, convenience hydrochloric acid next is the mass of the food that is semi digested acidic and pulpy is called as the chyme now what happens in the stomach that food is digested when the food is digested the acidic the, the juices are acidic so what happens they convert this uh, bolus into a pulpy substance and that substance is now known as chyme now which kind of food substances are nutrients are digested here whenever we swallow the food the food contains for carbohydrates proteins fats but out of those many nutrients only proteins are getting digested in the stomach the mucus and the bicarbonates of the gastric juice gastric juice are uh, is the collection of the juices enzymes which are present in the stomach for the digestion of the food help in the protecting of the mucosal epithelium now mucosal epithelium epithelial tissue which is forming the inner lining of the stomach is called as the mucosal epithelium from the highly acidic hydrochloric acid mucus helps in the lubricating of the food now what happens various in uh, reactions for your convenience i have represented here Let's see gastric juices and enzymes and how do they show the chemical reaction hcl provides the acidic ph pepsinogen which is a proenzyme converts pepsin converted uh, gets converted into pepsin by the action of hcl pepsin what it does it converts proteins into peptones as i've told you only protein get digested and proteins in which form they are digested or broken down here digestion would be a wrong uh, word broken down as starch gets broken down into simple sugars proteins are also broken down into peptones and proteoses next pro renin now renin is again uh, in enzyme and it is also present in the inactive form pro renin it is converted into renin by hydrochloric acid next is casein now casein is a milk protein milk what we consume is containing a protein that is called as the casein now casein cannot be digested by the pepsin no it cannot be digested so what it does casein can be only digested by the renin so casein milk protein is converted into peptides now peptides are what these are the smaller forms of the protein and they are converted in converted by the renin now the food which is becoming as which has become acidic it is called as chyme now it has to go into the small intestine the small intestine starts from a structure called as duodenum and if you can refer to the earlier videos you can see the structure of the uh, small intestine in which i have uh, represented the uh, label then uh, this duodenum over here you will find that this small intestine it uh, starts the digestion process let us let me again show you a diagram of it okay students so this is the diagram uh, you can remember so the stomach opens up into this small intestine through this tube and this particular part is called as the duodenum now we can look into the diagram that uh, stomach is also having two other uh, and glands these are exocrine glands one is called as the liver and another is called as the pancreas so if i want to denote it what, what you can denote uh, it is already done over the diagram so it is the liver and it is the pancreas so liver is associated with a small term, uh, structure called as the gallbladder liver secretes the bile juice and bile juice is uh, stored in gallbladder whereas pancreas secretes pancreatic juice which is uh, uh, containing various types of enzymes helps helping in the digestion of the other nutrients of the uh, food so let us uh, continue with the topic that we are discussing and how the nutri uh, how the process of digestion takes place in the small intestine so in small intestine what happens there are many enzymes that are secreted into the small intestine from organs such as pancreas liver apart from the intestinal juices now intestine small intestine is also acting as a gland which secretes uh, some kind of uh, digestive juices which help in the digestion of the other nutrient which are left over in the food so 
Now, before proceeding further into this particular topic of bile, the nature of these enzymes secreted by the pancreas, liver and intestinal juices are alkaline. Alkaline means basic. They are highly basic. Remember, stomach is having the highly acidic juices. So, to neutralize the effect of the acidic content, so uh, intestines uh, containing contains alkaline juices, which mixes and neutralizes the effect of the chyme. So, now the food coming down to the intestine, mixing with the alkaline juices, is called as the chyle. C H Y L E. So, now what happens here? Bile. Bile converts. Bile is what? It is the juice which is produced by the liver and the bile converts the fat globules now globules into fat droplets now fat is a food that we take in our daily diet now these fat droplets fat, fat globules or fat substance it is broken down into pieces they are making into droplets and that is, that is called as the emulsification now through a process is called as emulsification so emulsified fat these all the droplets are called as emulsified fats emulsification fats are broken down into diglycerides now, diglycerides means two molecules of glycerol are called as the glycerides and monoglycerides means one molecule of glycerol. So, it is like diglycerides and monoglycerides. Next is pancreatic lipase. It converts diglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. So, it converts glycerides. For your convenience, if we omit the word, if we omit the word, Right. So it is going to say glycerides, diglycerides into fatty acids and glycerol. Next, the bio macromolecules are broken down in the duodenum region. So what I've told you that duodenum is the first step or first region of the small intestine and over there itself the breaking down of the food substances take place. So duodenum, all the simpler forms of the digested food are absorbed in the jejunum and ileum. So another process of the another important uh, function of small intestine is after the food is digested these food is absorbed so jejunum and ileum are the areas where the food is getting absorbed into the blood in the in, into the blood from the small intestine now let us see the reactions that take place in the small intestine Pep proteins peptone and proteoses okay so these are the uh, substances which are formed in the stomach and, and they come into the small intestine. Now, trypsin is one of the enzymes. Chymotrypsin is one of the enzymes. Carbox carboxypeptidase is one of the enzymes. Remember the names of these enzymes and they convert these protein, proteins, peptones, proteases, proteoses into dipeptides. Okay. Now, carbohydrates, polysaccharides. Polysaccharides like starch and complex carbohydrates, they are broken down by amylase. Amylase is one of the enzymes in the pancreatic juice into disaccharides. Fats, fats are acted upon by the lipases. Lipases, they break down into diglycerides. Diglycerides break these fats into monoglycerides. And finally, nucleases. Now, nucleases are what? By the term, you can understand that they are present in the new nucleus the enzymes which break down the dna and rna so nucleic acid the dna and rna contain nucleic acids they are acted upon by the nucleases and they break down into nucleotides and nucleosides so we have started seeing that how the process of digestion take place in the small intestine for your convenience i have uh, explained this reactions and uh, further into some uh, functions of pancreatic juices in some detailed form so you can understand you can read and you can uh, have an idea that what all enzymes are present in the pancreatic juice and bile juice and how do they help in the intestinal juices sorry and how do they help in the conversion of uh, simpler biomolecules into the simplest of them so amylase converts into starch into maltose as we have seen in the buccal cavity Enterokinase. Enterokinase present in the intestine, intestinal juice converts trypsinogen into trypsin. Trypsinogen is an inactive enzyme, converts into active trypsin. Now what happens? Trypsin converts the proteins into dipeptides. Trypsin also converts chymotrypsinogen, which is an inactive enzyme, into active chymotrypsin. Chymotrypsin converts peptones into dipeptides. 
trypsin converts pro carboxypeptidase into carboxypeptidase this detailing what i am saying telling you is this detailing of the function of these enzymes are just to give you an idea uh, how these diacetylases function this is for your convenience elaboration of the concept in the similar way uh, we can also see for intestinal juices intestinal juices may uh, this is maltase sucrase lactase for this you can say most of them are the carbohydrate digestion it is carbohydrate carbohydrate digestion juices so uh, but these are the next two are protein digesting protein digesting so next we will see how what happens after the food is digested in the small intestine the food is uh, absorbed into the blood how does that happen let us see okay in this diagram i have already uh, shown you earlier videos this is the inner wall of uh, small intestine inner wall of small intestine is turned into some imaginations these are villi and every villi is having microvilli so microvilli and villi they help in the absorption of the digested food the digested food is uh, connect is sent to the blood stream just like this you can say that uh, this is the inner wall of the small intestine and villi are connected with these uh, capillaries arteries so this is the blood capillaries and these blood capillaries are connected to the blood vessels so these blood vessels they go to different parts of the body to different parts of the tissues and organs and they help the digested food to be uh, assimilated at in the storage organs so if you can see this is the detailed pictures of uh, a diagrammatic pictures representations of small intestine now proceeding with the topic that we are studying now let us see what happens when the digested food uh, undigested food uh, which is left over in the small intestine what happens to that it comes to the large intestine and what happens in the large intestine the digestion activity is significantly less here the bacterial action on the left leftover food particles occur now the leftover food particle is not acted upon by any other enzyme right now because the, the enzymes are not present in the large intestine here minerals water and certain drugs are absorbed in the large intestine the mucus secreted by the large intestine helps in holding the waste particles apart from lubricating it so what happens excessive amount of the water is reabsorbed back into the body so that we do not suffer from any kind of dehydration that uh, that is all what happens in the uh, large intestine later the food undigested and unabsorbed waste particles called as the fecal matter are passed to the rectum rectum is the area where the temporary storage of the food undigested food happens which is now called as the fecal matter from where it is eliminated through the anus so uh, in this manner you will find that the digestion process is completed next we can understand a bit like if we say that uh, um, we can say that one more thing one more thing that we have to understand here now this is the detailed structure of a large intestine you can see a small organ it is present here it is called as the appendix as you can see it is informed here appendix appendix is a vestigial organ as you can say and uh, it does not help us in in the digestion process whereas it helps it is uh, uh, it was earlier functioning in the ruminants and other vertebrates but in our body it is a non functioning structure but wherever whenever uh, any part part of the food it goes inside it uh, it's it causes a condition which is called as appendicitis because of the decomposition of the food inside its structure now let us understand that with this process of digestion it involves all the enzymes but there is a significant role of brain inside it all the information of secreting of enzymes and uh, uh, functioning of the organs 
by the body during the digestion process is controlled by the brain and also brain controls endocrine glands endocrine glands secrete hormones so there is always a control of the digestive processes and this control of the digestive processes is done by hormones and the nerves means what the nervous system and the hormonal system are equally important to control the digestion process there is a constant flurry of signals between the brain and the alimentary canal hormones control the digestion process by signaling the body at appropriate times to make the digestive juices they also send signals to the brain by to indicate being hungry or full and the nervous system through the brain and spinal cord controls the digestive processes so students uh, i hope that you could understand in the best possible way how our digestive system function go through your textbook go through the topics given in the textbook the blue boxes which explains you the activities related to the digestive processes and the yellow boxes which may also tell you about some about uh, extra information uh, regarding the digestive system again we will meet and we will discuss about some other topic the next topic of our discussion will be respiratory system thank you